Okay, so Kerbal Space Program. These guys are little Kerbals, and we're gonna try to send them into space and hopefully not kill them. So it's going to be the actual space program? Yes, it is. Alright, we're pulling up uh, the interview. Mm -hmm. And there's an interview. Hi. Hello, Anthony. Hello. Hello. Switch interview. How's it going, guys? Good, good. So. Are we still having issues? Yeah, first off, let me say sorry. Uh, I don't have the lead dev with me today. I'm, I'm not quite sure why not. Um, he's either running late or, or having problems. So, But as the community manager, I'm, I'm allowed to discuss the game in its entirety. Yeah, really. So. All right. Well, we're just getting this uh, launched right now. Hopefully you can see this. I do, yes. Alright, so I admit I haven't uh, played much of this game stock. I love all the mods that are on the website. <laughs> I love we them. love the mods too. Oh, we love the modders. Oh, they're great. So, um, did you guys uh, go into this planning on having a bunch of uh, easy to mod and anticipating or hoping for a lot of fan content for this? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, the 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 dev team when they started working on the game, the the idea for the game in its entirety from word go was to um, be as open-ended for modding as possible. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a big Minecraft player myself, and um, there's so many different APIs and so many people trying to compete for who gets what mod and whatnot, and we didn't want to do that, so. Okay. Do you have any plans on having a more in-game mod support? Because right now it's just go on the website or the forums, copy it over. Do you have any in-game... Um, uh, easier. I know Minecraft, they keep talking about doing this eventually, but they haven't implemented that at all. Uh, eventually, yeah. I, we, we, we have a service um, that may or may not be up in the next month or two, and unfortunately I can't go into details about it. Well, I will look forward to that, if it may or may not happen. <laughs> so what other questions you guys got? Feel free to just fire away. All right. uh, if anyone in chat has questions, fire away. You might think we have some questions here. Ask yourself for questions, Gary. No, Gary. Um, let me make that easier for you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, which was it? I say yes. No. Okay, I guess we can have an autopilot. <laughs> probably want to. Probably want to start with the decoupler. Just saying. Decoupler. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just. Yeah. What made you decide <laughs> to make the game a game like this? Seriously. Oh, well. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a funny thing, uh, Philippe Falenge, the, the lead developer, otherwise known as Harvester, which of course you know we all love him, uh, he was, he's was he been working for Squad for a long time, and, and Squad is a Mexican company, we're based out of Mexico City, uh, but we have a lot of international uh, employees, British and American as well, and uh, so he was doing uh, applications development and stuff for advertising and, and, all, and marketing and didn't want to do it anymore, got tired of it, so... The company has a an initiative where, you know, once a year they 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 put up so that anybody in the company can bring a project to the uh, lead producer and the chief executive officer, and if they like it, they'll do it. And basically, Philippe said, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm I'm done. I'm, I'm I quit. And uh, Adrian Goya, the senior producer, and Ezekiel, the chief executive officer, loved him so much that they're like, well, what do you want to do? And he's like, well, I want to make a video game and I want to work from home. And they're like, okay, done. <laughs> so you know there you have it, and uh, so the chat. He, would like, oh, go ahead. The the chat would like to the what? The chat now? would like to a, a brief description of what what this game is. Um. Well, as you can see from uh, the guys playing it on the stream, it's uh, uh, managing your own space program. I mean, that's of course the end goal for us. Uh, right now, it's just building rockets and space planes and uh, exploring a sandbox solar system and, you know, going on IVA and EVA and, and, and just pretty much having all kinds of choice to do whatever you want with building your rockets and exploring the solar system. So eventually, we're going to have a career mode where you have to manage 
your own space program and, you know, make sure people are paying you. So, you know, you might have a Kerbal TV group say, hey, can you put this, <laughs> you know, this satellite up in space for us? And if you screw it up in typical KSP fashion, they're not going to pay you ever again. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. It seems like a disastrous launches are pretty much half the fun of the game. Was yeah. making failure hilarious a design goal, or did that just sort of happen? Um, yeah, a matter of fact, um, the lead dev just got on. He had lost his internet, and he is back. So uh, I don't know if you guys have him or not, if you want to add him to the call. Oh, can yeah, we, how, can we, how can we make that happen? I don't have, am I a Skype person? I'm not a Skype person. Right. Uh, no, I think the Skype guy is like, because you have the Skype call camera. Cool. Did you guys hear that? No. We have oh. the lead dev that we need to get on the yeah. Skype okay. if we can. One moment, please. Oh, sure. Yeah. We're yeah. on that. On it? I'm going to put some more explosives on my rocket here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, typical KSP fashion there. On your rocket. Skype. So, what am I doing? We're looking uh, for the lead. lead dev. What's his name? What's his uh, Skype name? Yeah. What's his uh, Skype name? Uh, it's uh, Philippe Falange. Yeah, so uh, send it to us. Okay. Yeah. 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 We don't want everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My bad. I don't know if he's if I just did that correctly or not. I might have screwed it up. I just meant to send you his contact information. He might have actually been brought into the call. So. Oh, Hi. there he is. Yay! Hi. Hi. Yes, this this is the guy that I was just talking about that made the game. This is Philippe, otherwise known as Harvester. So he is the uh, the lead developer. So I'm gonna shut up and, and let you guys ask him some questions. Hello, Philippe. Hey. Can you hear us? Uh, yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, we have a question. Uh, where did you get the idea of Kerbals, the little green men who we're sending up into space? They're just. Did you actually send them to space? Well, I'm trying to send them to space. But I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're quite amusing. Are you in good faith trying to send this? Well, hopefully this isn't going to blow up. <laughs> but um, <laughs> normally there's also that uh, uh, a mod which has all the autopilot functions, which I must say I'm a huge fan of because I'm I like building things and not exactly. Uh, Do you have any plans on incorporating more autopilot creatures in this game? Or are you going to need that as mod supported? You're breaking up, I can barely hear you. Oh, I, uh, I got it. Yeah. 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 Alright. Yeah, uh, yeah you guys are kind of, we're kind of having a little bit of trouble with the sound there, guys. Uh, oh, I forgot to put stabilizers on this rocket. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're we're kind of going a little sideways here. Uh, can we turn down the game? The game's really loud. Yeah, the game is quite, quite loud. Uh, if they can't hear us, can you type in the questions? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can relay the question to him. I don't know if, uh, if you guys can... I was wondering if the uh, microphone was actually picking up the TV. I think it was. Yeah, I think that's much... Cool. Okay, so, I turned it down. Hey, uh, Philippe, the question was, how did you come up with the uh, the idea for Kerbals? And then there was another one in regards to, uh, I think, what you're currently working on for the next update. Um, so... You know, in regards to uh, autopilot functionality and the like. So, if you want to answer those in, in succession. Okay. Well, um, the idea for Turbo Drum uh, was born out of this. Um, oh, it's actually a very reckless game we used to play as teenagers, where we would take these uh, skyrockets and firecrackers and basically uh, disassemble them and assemble them into, um, well, our own contraptions for making a spacecraft. And um, uh, it wasn't long before we started uh, making little men out of tin foil and strapping them to, uh, to these uh, things. And, uh, um, and we called them crews. And uh, it was their mission to reach space. And uh, well, the whole idea evolved from there, I think. And, uh, I think it goes without saying, uh, don't try this at home. <laughs> and uh, about the, uh, um, about the, uh, the things for the next update, uh, we are working on a new uh, autopilot system. Well, it's not actually an autopilot. It's, uh, I call it flight planning because um, it doesn't really pilot the ship for you. It just, um, uh, the whole idea is that um, we want to make it as accessible as possible for you to be able to get anywhere on the space system and basically uh, take out all of the, uh, the complication out of uh, 
out of making it space because currently the only way to get to other planets is using your actual calculator. Yeah, I've experienced that. It's, regardless, it's been quite a challenge getting to uh, Mars or Minmus, I believe you call it. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we call the desert planet Duna. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Duna. I yeah. Minmus is one of the moons. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, uh, Another thing that uh, we actually wanted to keep, we didn't want to just uh, add a system that took you there and made it ex uh, extremely easy. We wanted it to still be some sort of a challenge. So what we're working on is a system that hopefully will allow you to uh, to get there, but at the same time, uh, you'll still need to uh, uh, think about how you're doing things and um, and basically plan uh, what you're what you're gonna do it it won't take any of the controls away from you it just uh, makes it easier to uh, to do things without having to uh, resort to external tools or anything like that okay so in a related note how do you go about making the uh, process of achieving this enjoyable how do you make the uh, failures kind of hilarious when everything happens to blow up instead of a uh, rather frustrating that some games seem to have well, I that was one of the uh, main points that we wanted to uh, to include in the game, actually, from uh, the earliest design ideas, that uh, we wanted failures to be fun as much as possible and not frustrating. So the whole game was built around the premise that failure is part of the uh, of the whole thing, and the game is supposed to make you uh, to let you fail in uh, as spectacular a way as possible, so that you can learn from your mistakes and then uh, correct them and try again and then fail somewhere else further ahead and then correct that and move on and it's kind of like um, it's very much what science and uh, science and the scientific experimentation is all about so we wanted to include that as much as possible in the, uh, in the gameplay yeah were there any specific design decisions you made to to help make failure more fun uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we're actually looking into making, uh, uh, creating more than just uh, either. Right now, either a part is uh, alive and well, or it's exploded and it's a fireball. So what we what we're thinking about doing eventually is adding uh, new um, states in between them, so that you can have interesting um, semi failures, if you will. For instance, uh, an engine might flame out and. Uh, but not immediately explode. Right. So you still get a chance to put out the flames and try to continue with the mission. And uh, it's uh, it's a sort of thing that we're looking into right now is to uh, to give you more uh, opportunities to rescue your uh, your mission and things like that. Crickets. So I understand there's a big uh, modding community for KSP, and they're really active. How has the community affected the development of the game? Um, Philippe, do you want me to answer that, or? Okay, yeah, being the community manager, it's kind of my job to know. So uh, <laughs> the the great thing is is, is that the, the community, like I said earlier before Philippe came on with me, is that you know the, the design for the game was always to allow modding. And the community saw that we allowed modding and that we encouraged it and for some reason, I don't know I don't know why myself, but they sort of really just latched onto it. Um, very, very much so. And it's actually the great thing is is it's actually helped us grow. Uh, like Chad, uh, aka C7, Cloud7 Studios, he did the space planes as a mod, uh, and now he's part of the dev, uh, the dev team as one of our lead programmers and content designers, and most of his mod work is actually in the game. Uh, Nova Salisco, one of our content designers, who was a modder first, is now on the team. So, you know, we, we pull from the community as well, and they've, they've helped shape uh, the development of the game and uh, help give Philippe and the guys lots and lots of ideas for new cool stuff that we might not have thought about. Yeah. Hopefully uh, that answers it. <laughs> if I might add something else to you. Uh, uh, ever since we started the game, we already knew that um, uh, we left some parts of, uh, of the design uh, documents, if you will, if it weren't exactly that documents. Uh, the game project, we left some 
areas of it um, del deliberately open, We're, uh, waiting for feedback from the community, because we didn't really know how uh, the game was going to be received. So we didn't want to impose a sort of a specific type of game before we knew what uh, what the community wanted us to do with it. So this is one of the good things about doing a game, uh, publishing a game before it's ready. Because you can get a sort of feedback on an, uh, on a stage of development where you where you're still able to make these uh, very large significant changes. So that was one of the um, I think one of the happiest decisions we made was uh, to uh, not really uh, have a very rigid uh, design uh, format for the game beforehand. So the game kind of grew uh, based around feedback from the community. So we kind of knew where to go from there. <laughs> well, let's open up uh, some of these questions to the... Well, I mean, I, I do have some news for you guys if you're interested. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the senior producer gave me permission to to discuss some some stuff with you. Uh, next week, uh, middle of next week is uh, 0 0.17.1. Okay. And uh, it's a it's a patch fix, but mainly we're uh, testing all of our new server architecture. We bought two new servers, and uh, we did a little bit of transition and migration. So we're using this update as uh, a way to test this uh, because we are also in talks with Amazon. We're going to Amazon Cloud because uh, more often than not, when we release, we get like 60, 70,000 downloads and our entire network dies. You know, horrible, fiery death, you know, Kerbal Space Program fashion. That yeah, wasn't pretty. No, it wasn't. Like, the last time we updated on a Friday and everything that could go wrong did go wrong, and you know, KSP-wise, and just the entire network died a horrible, fiery death. So um, we decided never again on a Friday. We're going to release in the middle of the week, and we're going to work on new servers. So we got that next week. And then in the middle of November, we are having a huge party and uh, streaming event and everything else. And I can't really go into details as to why, but I'll let you guys think about that on your own, the guys on the stream and you guys as well. So, um, you know, if anybody from this particular stream would like to show up, we'd love to have you. Uh, we, we're going to do some more charity and charity work with you. Um, we do have the three keys for KSP. Now we have to build those internally, so we will give them to you on Monday. But if you, you're still more than welcome to raffle them off and give them to people, and then when we give you the codes, you can mail it and things like that. So oh, that's that's pretty much all the news that I got for you. We got something. We 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 have what we believe is the biggest, most ambitious update to the game we've ever done coming in November, mid-November, somewhere. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'll shut up and let Philippe have some more talk there. I'll say it's it's looking interesting. This new update. The stuff that I've been working on, and, uh, a lot of uh, new and cool, exciting stuff coming out. And, uh, a lot of things that we really, really wanted to do and add to the game, and uh, just now we're getting a chance to get it done. So, yeah, we're pretty excited about it. And, uh, and you guys were going to open yeah, does chat, the chat questions? Any questions? Yeah, the chat wants to know about a retail release. We, sorry, Fleet. You want to handle that? Yeah, if you want to take that. Okay, we are we are going on Steam. So, oh, but no, but no retail. So, um, yeah, we're going on Steam. We're not going through Greenlight because, um, yeah, Greenlight kind of. I mean, we love the guys at Valve. They're all great, but uh, Greenlight probably wasn't what they thought it was going to be. Yeah. So, I know there's like people that have like, hey, look at my game, and it's nothing but pictures of naked ladies and stuff like that on on Greenlight, and yeah. so. Um, Greenlight's cool, and they're doing a lot of work on it, but we're, we're not going through Greenlight. We're just directly in talks with Valve to go straight up onto Steam. And, uh, of course, that won't hurt any of the people that have already bought the game. They'll, they'll get a Steam key, and uh, we still like to, to keep things as much on our network as possible. But we are going to go on Steam, but a retail box release, that's um, probably not going to happen. Um, if it does, it'll be a long, long time ago. Somebody also Mark. wants to know about the origin of the Kerbals. Uh, Philippe went over that earlier. Well, I don't know if he wants to go. A little bit, but what about like the in-game origin? Is there? Ah, I'll let Philippe handle that. Ah, okay. Um, that well, AMC. Um, other than uh, what we uh, what we've seen from uh, fan fiction, there really isn't much of a, a backstory to the Kerbals, other than that uh, their their dream of reaching space is uh, probably more important than their sense of uh, self-preservation. So. Um, 
They're your uh, brave um, victims slash astronauts, and uh, they're just uh, they are willing to do anything for uh, the improvement of the space program. So. <laughs> So what's the dev team playing right now? What video games are they playing? Oh, um, well, I myself, like I said, I'm a huge Minecraft fan, but I've put 42 hours into XCOM Enemy Unknown in the span of two days, so. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, indie games, myself a lot. Um, I kickstarted Castle Story, and I've been playing the prototype, and it's amazing. So oh. I don't know if you guys were going to show it on the stream or not, but it's great. So, and then... So... Yeah, it's really, really awesome. I've been kickstarting a lot, like Volgar the Viking and uh, uh, Planetary Annihilation and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm playing, unfortunately, a lot of AAA ex titles right now besides Minecraft and, and KSB. So, we don't and then, judge here. It's okay. Yeah, sorry. Don't judge me. And then I'll let Philippe talk. So. <laughs> well, as for me, I uh, actually haven't played nearly as much as I'd like to lately, but... Uh, when I get a chance, I usually play a lot of. Uh, uh, I played a lot of Minecraft a couple of uh, few months ago, but uh, lately I've been playing mostly DayZ, which is that uh, zombie survival mode, which is uh, pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, mostly I've been playing that. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're kind of boring. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, I really don't get to play as much as I'd like to. Yeah, me either. <laughs> what other titles have you worked on? Um, well, actual game titles, actual KSP is actually Squad's first uh, game title. Um, we did work on, uh, we did create some other uh, interactive applications for other uh, purposes. We weren't exactly games, but some of them were almost there. Um, we did have. Um, 3D graphics and all the uh, uh, input hardware and all that, but they were just one step shy of being an actual game. And um, so, KSP is our first uh, legitimate attempt at a, at a game. And, um, there go. I think we're doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> this would be my first game, too, uh, believe it or not. I uh, volunteered for almost a year, and then finally the guys were like, you know, you're doing enough work to deserve coming on the team and they brought me on the team so this would be my my first project so and I'm in love with it but that you know I'm kind of biased <laughs> um, Lost Lamb has been asking are there going to be any uh, aliens in the future in the game are there now or any future planes for future versions plans plans probably plans oh sorry my bad um Wait, aliens or planes or what? Or aliens. Planes? Aliens, aliens, aliens. Aliens and or other future plans. Well, um, I don't know how much in terms of aliens we want to add to the game because it's not really what the game is about, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, if we do add aliens, it's going to be some uh, something like uh, you found some sort of uh, interesting microbial life or maybe some sort of alien uh, ruin somewhere out in the even a solar system. But uh, I, I wouldn't go as far as saying we plan on adding uh, other species we can interact with. But, uh, but yeah, uh, as far as plans for the future, we have a lot of new, like, uh, a lot of ideas that we want to implement. And actually, uh, it's kind of hard to, uh, uh, to talk about that because you have so many ideas and so little uh, uh, manpower to implement them all that we really need to uh, to choose what we want to add the most on each other. Day. And uh, so yeah, we have a lot of uh, stuff that we really want to get to, but uh, it's all way uh, still very far ahead in the future. So can I ask you guys a question? Uh, yeah, sure. What do you guys think of the game? Oh, I'm a huge fan, personally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right up here, though. Oh, yeah. It's right up your alley. Yeah, never, good to I've know. I've never played this game personally, but I love building things in games. Oh, so too. I'm definitely going to be checking this yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Some of the best educational games are games that um, don't explicitly teach, but just get you excited about the subject matter. Oh, no, no. And, oh, um, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the kind of game that I think can really get people excited about the space program and start reading about yeah. that and learning yeah. about it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I was wondering if that was an explicit goal of yours or if you were just trying to make something fun. Well, I know before, let me say what we're doing real quick before Philippe responds because he will definitely have some really cool stuff to talk about with that. But we are actually in the process of talking to NASA. Whoa. Whoa. So they play our game. The Jet Propulsion Lab team plays NASA, uh, plays KSP. The guys that did the Curiosity mission, they, they play our game. So um, we just recently uh, liked and followed all their Twitters and Facebooks for their mission programs and the like, and um, they have a, a program where we can su submit educational stuff to them and they will promote it. And uh, so apparently, like uh, the JPL team, the Curiosity team, the low, uh, uh, excuse me, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter team, like a bunch of those guys actually play our game and, and love it. So we're, we're, we're discussing some things with them because we have teachers that are building lesson plans around KSP and using KSP as an educational tool. And uh, yeah, so we're moving forward with that. And I don't even think. Philippe knew about that. This is why I wanted to. I didn't mean to step. On, I didn't mean to step on your toes, boss, but I wanted to let you know about that because you know I figured you would like to hear it. So, yeah, see, yeah, there you go. So yeah, we're we're talking with NASA, and uh, that's going to be amazing because we we really hope to just give the game to them and and let them promote it and use it. And we got teachers that are using it to teach you know physics and things like that. So and then I'll let Philippe go from there. Okay. Uh I, have to say, I, I completely agree with the idea that uh, an educational game isn't a game that uh, it tries to explicitly teach you something. I think that uh, uh, that's not much of a game, is it? It's more of a, uh, a lesson disguised as a game. Uh, I think an, education, an educational game is a game that uh, drives you into wanting to learn about something. Like uh, one of the games that did that to me the most was SimCity. And, uh, and pretty much every Max's game ever made was something like it. It falls very much within what I, th I think is a true educational game. It's not a game that tries to force some subject down onto you so you learn it. It just generates that interest and uh, drives you to go on your own and find out more stuff about it. So actually, KSP wasn't uh, initially uh, thought to be uh, uh, an educational game like that. Uh, it's just something that. Uh, as we were developing the game, and uh, the initial idea for the game was very uh, simple and really non-ambitious. We just wanted to make a little game where you built a rocket and you sent it up and tried to get as far as you possibly could. But then uh, the idea started growing from there, and uh, I, I guess you could say we were the victims of a very serious case of feature creep, because the game was initially meant to be 2D. And, uh, <laughs> really didn't even plan to add orbital mechanics to it. Uh, so, um, and the, the whole thing started uh, snowballing from there, I guess. Uh, I think that uh, our own um, geekiness kind of uh, got in the way of making something that wasn't realistic. So we really wanted to uh, do things in the most realistic way possible. and. Uh, we ended up with a game that uh, really has uh, orbital mechanics and all that. And for me, uh, to know that the guys at JPL are playing the game and they like it, it's, it's a huge compliment. I mean, yeah, wow. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah. Without spoiling it too much, I, c I can say that uh, there is an homage to Curiosity on Duna. I'm not going to tell you where it's at. you got to go look. <laughs> All right. Those yeah. curveball exploration teams over there. Yeah, definitely. So some people watching the stream who want to make games themselves. Do you have any advice for them? Well, um, I'd say go for it. And uh, go for that crazy idea that you have. Because um, I think that too many projects right now are, uh, are going for the uh, the safe approach and uh, and going uh, and too many good ideas are being left uh, aside in favor of um, more um, tried and true uh, notions like uh, yet another colored block game or yet another first person shooter. So I think that uh, if you have a good idea for a game, go for it and try to uh, implement it as in any way you can at first and see where it goes from there, because uh, you can't lose anything in trying. Yeah, in the chat, Spluga and Kayan are both saying, make games, which I think is great advice for people who want to make games. 
I'd have to agree. And, you know, being in my position where I'm, you know, learning myself and, and being in the community now, um, being on the team, literally just what I'll add to this without being actually a dev yet is exactly that. Just go for it. If, you, if you've if you got something you want to do and you've got something that you're passionate about, don't let anybody stop you. Don't let anybody tell you it's going to suck. Make the game you want to play because uh, that's what we're doing, you know. Of course, you know, taking stuff from the community into effect but make the game you want to play and just sit down and, and build something and show it to somebody and if it's you know doesn't work then build something else you know prototyping that's what we do so i think that uh, if i could give you one more piece of advice would be uh, forget that, these, that there is such a thing as a target audience make the game you want to play and put it out on the internet and people like you will find it so that's what we did in KSP. It's really not a game for a specific target audience. It's a game that I wanted to play, and uh, everyone else uh, it seems to think like me, thankfully. <laughs> but yeah. So we've only got about a minute left. We have one last question from Skylab and AMC. They want to burn up and re-entry. When is that going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> planned. It's it's it's, it's planned. planned. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it will it will happen. But when we when we do it, we want to do it right. It's not just going to be pretty. I mean, you will actually, if you screw it up and come in too steep, you will explode in KSP fashion. So right here. Right. yeah, but not not for the next update, guys. It'll it'll be down the road. So awesome. All right, well, I think that's all the time we have. Yeah. Um, it's time. Yeah. So thank thanks you. for thanks, thanks for coming so out. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Perfect. Cut it there. Yeah. And, Good note to end on. And thanks for making KSP. Yep. Yep. Uh, up next, we have Super Crank Fox. Uh, Just a easy round. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah.